All right, this thing has not been easy to troubleshoot, but I think I've narrowed at least some things down. Um, I did replace capacitors that were stinky um, and everything looks good. Now I have real solid supplies. I have a real solid reference. Um, and uh, just to make life easy, I've put the two op amps on sockets so I can pull those out. And uh, they are out right now. So the way that these power supplies work is they should just turn on all by themselves and then at full maximum, and then it's up to the uh, voltage amplifier to pull it down to where it needs to be, or the current uh, amplifier to pull it down where it needs to go, and it goes through these diodes. And I, I disconnected the current diode just to make things easy in my mind, so I'm just looking at the voltage error, and I still wasn't able to get full voltage output. Now, the way that this works is this is the wrong circuit. So this is the circuit that I have. So I've got these two pass transistors. They, they get pulled up with 1K. I oh, know it's hard to read, but they get pulled up with 1K. So ignoring all of this stuff down here, this 1K at plus 12 turns these guys on. So if that were the only thing on the circuit, then it would, these would be hard on and boom, you'd get maximum voltage up, okay? And so you need some way of turning these off and that's what this transistor does. It pulls it down to negative 12 if it needs to. And that comes over here to the two diodes. So, so um, what I did was, like I said, I lifted one diode and I actually went in and I injected voltage right at this point here uh, to override anything else in the circuit, I was, I was injecting voltage right here, and I still couldn't get it to turn on. Um, I uh, had done a diode check on Q2 in circuit, and it seemed as though I was getting 0.6 volts, 0.6 volts. It seems like Q2 was working fine, but I still went round and round and round and round. The only thing I could figure out is maybe Q2 is wrong, and... Uh, damaged. So uh, I pulled him out and look what I found underneath. A very burnt IC or uh, transistor. Lots of burn marks on it. So once I pulled this thing out, I get maximum voltage to the system. So let me demo that. So I'm going to plug the power supply in. Uh, See where where do I plug it in here? There we go. Okay, and I am looking across the output. Whoa, I am looking across the output. Can you see that over there? I should probably always turn the light on this thing. Uh, yeah, there we go. Does that make it easier to see? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll just bring it a little closer. Bring it a little closer. I think that'd be better. Yeah, it's probably okay. Anyway, let me turn it on. And boom, we're getting uh, 16 volts out. It's negative because that's the way the grounding is in the system. But So I'm getting full voltage out now. And uh, let me load it down with a... Let me load it down with the resistor and see if it, uh, if it remains happy. This resistor is going to get toasty pretty quick. Yeah, it's pulling down to 15. And yeah, oh, ow. The resistor's getting toasty. It was a 50, 50 ohm resistor. So yeah. Um, so now, now it can output. So what I've done just now is to validate the two pass transistors, the two big Darlingtons. They, those are good. And all the rest of the circuitry looks like it's functioning okay now. And I think all I need to do is replace this, uh, replace this one transistor. And the interesting thing about this transistor, and it's marked on the schematic, um, See if I can zoom back down again. Hopefully you can see that. Um, this transistor here on the emitter of the transistor is marked ferrite bead L1. And sure enough, if people haven't seen these before, um, there is a little ferrite bead. Uh, it's just like a little tube. And that was on the emitter uh, of the transistor like that, and then that's soldered onto the board. So there's a little inductor right around the emitter of the transistor. Keep things from oscillating at high frequencies. 
So uh, I need to figure out what that transistor is. I don't think it's going to be too critical of a transistor. I can probably replace it with just about anything. Um, I don't know if I have any TL5 cans, but I probably can just put something else in there and it would be fine. Um, so I might do that. I'll try to look up that part number and see what it is. All right, I just found a, a PNP transistor in my junk bin. It's good for a couple watts, so uh, that'll be good. This one probably only good for a watt or so and, and uh, doesn't have a heat sink on it or anything. So I've got a, uh, what did I replace it with? Just in case you guys care, I replaced it with an MJE210 PNP. It's 25 volts, five amps, so a uh, pretty healthy little thing. What was the HFE on it, did it say? Uh, no, I don't know what they are, but anyway, it should be fine. It's in the feedback loop of the circuit, so it should all wash out. It doesn't really matter what that transistor is doing, as long as it's going to handle the current. And uh, so I have it all hooked up. Uh, there's the output voltage. And if I turn the knob on the front, I can make it go up. Uh, 8 volts, 9 volts, 10 volts. So... Uh, that is with the uh, the one op amp back in the uh, uh, voltage controlled op amp is back in. It's just a 741. Um, still kind of curious why they chose a 741. Be curious to talk to the designer of this uh, power supply. Why did you choose the 741? Because it's cheap. <laughs> it could be like it's got a good uh, voltage range or something. I don't I don't know. Tried and true, cheap. So that seems to be working now. The thing that doesn't work is I had to load the output. So I have a 500 ohm load on the output. If I disconnect that 500 ohm load on the output, you can see that it sort of bounces around. It wants, that feedback loop wants to have some load on it. And um, because you have that OR gate in there, it's only pulling in one direction, not the other, maybe? No, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why it needs to have a, needs to have some load on it, but even with 500K, it seems to be, it seems to be quite happy. Now there is, there is a load resistor in the machine um, on the schematic. It's R46. Um, there is a load. That's there all the time. That should take care of this problem. And I can't find R46. <laughs> Where to go? Uh, R3446. I just don't see R46 anywhere. I might just put one in there. Um, it it has an asterisk on it, so it's not, it doesn't say what value it's supposed to be. Um, if I just put a milliamp on the output, maybe? Let's see, 15 volts, uh, one milliamp, 15K. If I put a 15K resistor on it, will it fix it? Well, I've got a 10K right here. Let's, uh, I got lots of 10Ks, <laughs> 5,000 of them. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me turn it off. Let me put in a, a 10K and see if that makes it happy. All right. Uh, no, 10K does not make it happy. Uh, it's still bouncing around. Interesting. Hmm. No 10K if I just hold that 500 on there. Yeah, 500 quiets it right down. Let me put in a thousand. I got lots of those too. Uh, let's see here. Here's a here's a thousand. Yeah, a thousand quiets it down. So what's a thousand ohms? Fifteen. Thousand. That's 15, 15 milli, milliamps. 15 milliamps. Hmm. I don't know why, but maybe I'll put that in there. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt. It, it'll, it's a bleed resistor too, so when you turn the machine off, it sucks it down, bleeds it to ground. So yeah, maybe uh, I'll put a 1K in there and uh, do that. So the next thing to do is to see if I can't uh, get the uh, current current regulation working again. Probably does. If I've come this far, 
It's a very, very short trip to go the rest of the way.